YouTube, have they coming to you, Captain Awesome's Fish Room, Jeff Chromas Bro Vibe, bringing y'all a DIY video today. Really excited, it's been a long time since I brought you something like this. Um, we never actually finished the DIY uh, denitrating coil, uh, so I apologize about that. Uh, you know, it just kind of got put by the wayside with some of the stuff that I've been doing. Um, but, I ran out of drop checker fluid and for all of you out there that don't know what that is it's this little device that you uh, I'll show you one in a minute it's a little uh, either glass or plastic device that you put a liquid in and it either stays blue turns green or turns yellow if it's blue you don't have enough co2 in your tank uh, and this is for all you planted tank guys out there uh, if it turns green, that's the optimum level of CO2, 25 to 30 ppm. And if it turns yellow, you have way too much. Uh, so, uh, when I ran out of it, you know, it, it kind of bummed me out because I was going to have to order some and then, you know, wait for it to come and all that fun stuff. And, I mean, ugh. So, uh, I looked up, you know, a few things after talking to my buddy Katie. Uh, she had mentioned uh, that she saw somewhere that uh, you could uh, make your DI or your own uh, drop checker fluid, and it's called 4DKH or something like that. Yeah, 4DKH uh, liquid or fluid. Um, I'm going to show you how to make it. That's what today's video is going to be about. We're also going to uh, check out the new inhabitant in the fish room. Really excited to have this fish. Uh, really excited to show him to you. Uh, I mean, he's already annihilating snails. I mean, he's a beast. He or she, I don't know what it is yet, but uh, it's already personable. And, I mean, as soon as I put it in after acclimating last night, I mean, it beast moded on a trumpet snail. And I just thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Uh, so we'll check that out too. Maybe we'll even do a little feeding for you. So take a look at this awesome stuff and we'll be right back. Alright guys, so first we're going to take a look at what you need to do this. Okay, uh, go ahead and buy yourself a gallon of distilled water. Okay, because uh, the batch that I made is it's two liters. Uh, and the bigger the batch, the more accurate your reading is going to be. So I made two liters. Okay, so what you're going to need is you're going to need some baking soda, some pH um, test solution. Uh, I used APIs, you know, they, um, you know, they, they have the best test kits in my opinion. Uh, you'll need a digital scale or some kind of scale that can measure out to at least 0.1 grams. You'll need a uh, syringe that has at least 5 milliliters on it. Uh, this is optional, but you'll need something to measure a lot of milliliters. Uh, two liters equals 2,000 milliliters. And, uh, you know, this recipe uh, calls for 2,000 milliliters of distilled water, okay? Alright, so what you do is you measure out your two liters, okay? It took me a lot of stuff to measure it all out, but, uh, you know, use whatever tickles your fancy to measure out 2,000 milliliters of distilled water out of your gallon jug. Uh, once you measure it out 2,000 milliliters, you then want to take out all the water of this jug and, you know, put it somewhere, save it, whatever, because uh, you want this as your, uh, this is actually going to be 40 dKH, okay? We're going to have to dilute this, and how you do that is uh, once you, once you, okay, first you have to measure out 2.4 grams of baking soda. That's with your digital scale. You measure that out and then you mix that with your uh, 2,000 milliliters or 2 liters of distilled water, okay? That's going to give you your 40 dKH solution, okay? Uh, now that's a really strong solution, so we need to dilute that. So what we're going to do is once we have that mixed up, our 2.4 uh, grams of baking soda and 2,000 milliliters or 2 liters of distilled water, you're then going to want to take 50 milliliters of your 40 dKH solution and put it inside of a bottle, okay? Then you want to get some more, or well, you want to get 450 milliliters of just regular distilled water, and you set that off to the side earlier. You can see I still have extra. 
uh, and you'll put that together. Now that's going to give you four DKH solution, all right? And uh, what you do at this point is you'll measure five milliliters out of this bottle, okay? And then you'll put it inside your drop checker, which is what this is right here. All right, you can see that I have, well, it doesn't have a measurement on it, but there's five milliliters of four DKH solution in there. All right, now you might be wondering, how did you, you get it to turn blue, Jeff? Well, that's where your uh, pH test solution is going to come in, okay? Uh, now, you're going to want to at least double the amount of recommended drops uh, the bottle has on it, okay? So it has three, let me try to get it to focus. It has three drops on there, so you're going to want to at least do six drops of this stuff because it's going to make it easier to turn, it's, it's going to make it turn really, really blue and it's easier to read when it's darker. Uh, I ended up adding ten drops because I wanted it really dark. As you can see, it's really dark, and once I have my CO2 system dialed in, this is going to turn green. Uh, if I'm adding too much, it's going to turn yellow, and if I'm not adding enough, it's just going to stay a blue color. Okay, so uh, that's your DIY drop, tech, drop checker solution. Okay, so we'll go over it again. You'll need baking soda, some way to measure out two liters of water, a digital scale to measure out 2.4 grams of baking soda, a syringe with at least 5 milliliters or a way to measure out 5 milliliters. You'll need a gallon of water or 2 liters of water at least. Uh, and then a smaller bottle to get your 4 DKH solution mixed in. Uh, once you do that, you'll measure out your 2,000 milliliters of water, add your 2.4 grams of baking soda, and that's going to give you a 40 DKH solution, okay? Then you're going to take 50 milliliters of your 40 DKH solution, add it to a bottle, and then add 450 milliliters of just regular distilled water, and that's going to give you your 4 DKH solution, which is this right here. You'll then measure out 5 milliliters of that, add at least uh, 6 drops from the API pH test solution test, solution, uh, test kit, and you're all set. You, uh, you add the drops after you put it inside of your drop checker. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, or you can mix it inside of your uh, 5 milliliters and then add it all to your drop checker. Uh, but that's how you do it, guys. That's your DIY solution to your 4DKH solution to measure your CO2 pumping inside of your aquarium. So that's how you do that. Now when we come back, we're going to go take a look at my new friend inside of the fish room. And uh, we'll do a little feeding for you. Alright, so take a look at this awesomeness and we'll be right back. Alright guys, so here he or she is, that is a baby Fahaka Puffer. Uh, now, I've been doing a lot of research and, you know, I heard these guys grow pretty quick, so I have him growing out in this little 10 gallon. Uh, he came in a little bit smaller than I expected, which is great, uh, because, uh, you know, I didn't really want to start off with a big one anyway, I wanted to raise it from very young. Uh, but as you can see, he's alive and well. He transitioned very well. He's already, I mean, busting on snails in here. And I'm trying to follow him around so you can see him, like, just completely annihilate and murder one. Uh, but he's a really cool fish. The Fahaka Puffer, definitely a cool fish. He's in here with the Vampire and Royal Pleco. Uh, he hasn't been bothering them at all. Uh, he, you know, started swimming around immediately, and like I said, he annihilated a smaller, oh, there he goes, there he goes, look at that. He annihilated a smaller trumpet snail, uh, yesterday. We'll come over here and see what he's trying to peck at. Uh, but I'm gonna put some bloodworms in here and see if he goes after that. Um, if not, oh well. Uh, I'm not worried about him eating. Uh, I have a hearty party snail population in here and I already saw him eating a few so I'm not worried about him uh, as far as eating concerns but uh, he'll definitely be in here until uh, he outgrows the tank uh, which should be a few months and that's plenty of time to quarantine him as well to make sure he's nice and healthy you can see him he snagged something uh, but really really cool fish and uh, you know 
how he looks right now is nothing, nothing, guys, compared to, yeah, he's busting on a snail right now. Look at him. Oh, I don't know if y'all can hear that, but you can hear him crunching it. Oh, beast mode. You can hear him crunching on it. I don't know if y'all can hear it, but I can. That's awesome. Uh, but he's going to, I mean, he's going to look really, really cool. Uh, you know, here, let me get some blood worms in there. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, he, he came in nice and healthy. Uh, y'all know, y'all know I, the, the issue I had. Uh, you know, you know, and, uh, you know, it, it, it ended up working out, so I'm happy about that, and I really appreciate all y'all support, uh, with that, you know, um, you know, there was a few people that were concerned that it might, uh, you know, have a negative impact, uh, but I'm not bashing the companies in general, guys, you know, I want the customer service that, you know, we've all come to expect from these people, and, you know, that's the reason I had a call of action. Not that I wanted everybody to go bash on them or anything. And, you know, I even said that in the video. It was a customer service issue. So, uh, that's what I, the, the whole thing I was talking about with that. Uh, so, I do hope y'all, you know, understand that. And, uh, but like I said, the, the puffer came in very, very healthy. Uh, I mean, he was... I mean, he was rocking it, and, you know, it had a lot to do with him as small as he was, I'm sure, uh, because if it would have been a bigger one, it would have been a, you know, a harder trip on him. There he goes. He might grab a blood worm for us. But, uh, yeah, he came in alive and well. I'm really excited to be raising one of these fish. Uh, I've wanted one for a very long time, uh, but normally you can only find a medium-sized, and I, you, I mean, most of y'all know that I really love raising fish from, uh, you know, a very small size, that way I can attribute my care and stuff to uh, how they look and how healthy they are and stuff like that, so with that said guys, I hope y'all enjoyed today's video, I hope y'all enjoy the new inhabitant inside the fish room, uh, because I know I am, uh, be sure to leave some comments as to what y'all, you guys think about the puffer, if y'all have any questions about them, stuff like that. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all are thinking. Uh, go check out Aquatic Support Systems on Facebook, guys. A lot of big things coming. And you definitely want to be a part of it. Go check out all the members of Team Aquatic Support. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all are thinking. This is what I'm doing. This is what I've done. Happy fish keeping. Stay true to the hobby. And we'll see y'all next time, folks. Adios.